Great, so today we're going to look at some air-dried wet preparations or smears of skin scrapes and gill biopsies to see what they actually look like and whether you can actually diagnose what you can see down the microscope without any special stains. So these are just air-dried smears of gill biopsies and skin mucus scrapes. So the first thing we're going to have a look at is the gill flukes. So here we've just put the slide of the gill biopsy of a specimen that had a gill fluke infestation um, under the microscope. So what you can see here are some gill filaments, primary filaments with secondary lamellae sticking out to the sides. So we've got two there and intermittently you can see some dark regions. So let's zoom in on the darker regions and let's have a look, let's focus in on these and have a closer look. So here's one of them. We zoom in so now we're at 10 times or objective. If we focus on here you can start seeing the detail of what is actually on there. So right now we've got the condenser off. Put the condenser back in, back to 10 times objective you can see that this is a structure of a metazoal creature. Right, so over here is another specimen. Let's zoom in closer at 40 times objective. You can see here prominently the four eye spots right in the center of the screen. The body is a browny refractile tessellated appearance again. And if we come down here the caudal part of the body you can see on the bottom left part of the screen are uh, hooks known as the haptors. So this is dactylogyrus, which is also known as the gill fluke. So here I've loaded a, another slide here. This is one of a skin fluke. So this is at four times objective, moving up to a ten times objective and have a look here. What we're looking at here, it's not as brown looking as the gill flukes. They're actually not staining up or not, does, do not contain any sort of pigmentation at all. And you can see the very large haptors on the top of the screen and there are no eye spots at the bottom of the screen. And what you'll notice in the middle of this is a uterus and it actually contains a baby fluke. Here we go. Large haptors in the uterus, another fluke, it produces live young and the lack of eye spots. Let's see if we can find another one so we can get an eye in on what these guys look like in unstained air dried smears of skin scrape. So here you can actually see another one coming up in the center of the screen. They're short, sort of like a fluke shape so that's what you try and look for uh, when you put these under the microscope and you're also looking for the large haptors. Here you are. Now we're loaded another slide and this is of a skin mucus scrape that's air dried preparation. No stain, looking at it on a light microscope um, with the condenser pulled down. So zooming around here you can see skin, uh, material, some mucus and you can also see these large round objects. A uh, variable size I mean from large to really large and if we zoom in on them See here, this one there, right in the center of the screen, another one there, and more of them all the way around. And you can notice that they are actually larger than the host cells. So, host cells are these smaller uh, refractile pale cells, these are the red blood cells um, that have come loose. So, we're going to zoom around and look for some more things. So, this is 
what you known as white spot disease. So back to what we were talking about before. You can see it's a hollow trichus, so they contain cilia all over the body. And you can see that uh, around the edges. Looks like they're radiating something. These are actually the cilia. So this is white spot disease, otherwise known as ichthyopterius multifilis. And you can see here, these guys are trying to insist onto the skin. Hence the shape isn't quite round. But you can notice that they are completely different from everything else around. So this is how your eye gets pulled in to look for them. So here we're still looking at it at four times objective and a lot of people talk about the horseshoe shaped nucleus and so here it is, it's not present in everything um, as we've seen previously uh, but you can actually see them. So here we zoom in and out you can see the horseshoe shaped nucleus in the center of this um, critter and if we move around here you can see another one they're forming the horseshoe shaped nucleus. So we're at 10 times objective lens now. And here, coming up, there you go, two of them there with the horseshoe shaped nucleus. Hope you're happy with that. This is actually trichodina. You can see the um, denticular ring in the middle. Looks a bit like the spokes of a bicycle. These are ciliated protozoa and they're known as trichodina. But those are not, those are very nice to look at but they're not uh, primary pathogens. Great, so right about now you might be thinking, yeah this is way too easy. So let's up the difficulty slightly and now we're looking at a different critter here. I've just loaded another slide. So we're looking at it at uh, 10 times objective. Uh, we might have to go up to 40 times but I'll bring it back to 10, 4 times uh, so you can get an eye in on what we're looking at. And so we can't really see anything at this distance but the critters are here so we're moving up to 10 times objective. What you'll notice is in the background are the host cells but you'll notice there are some cells here that are larger, much much larger than the host cells. So one of the techniques when you're doing cytology is you want to look at the relationship between host cell size and the parasite size. So here we zoom in and out you can see here we've actually got four of them. They sort of look like blobs uh, which is an artifact from drying. That's why it's much much better and easier to diagnose these things on wet preparations. But you can see around here they're sort of slightly pear, not quite pear shaped, round oval shaped. Um, these ones have a flat side on one side. This one looks a bit squashed but I'm not sure if you can appreciate that there are parallel rows if you look to the right of what's in the center. These are supposed to be the parallel rows of cilia which these guys possess. Let's see if we can get an another look at one of these. So that's one there. It's another one there, slightly heart shaped in a way. So yeah, I guess these these are the best that you can see. These are what's known as Kylo Donella. Here are a few more. Those ones tend to look resemble more like what they look like on wet preparation and you can appreciate they have parallel rows of cilia if you look at them through the middle of the body as I focus in and out 
on the section now adjust the condenser we'll bring it closer you can sort of see them there this is what's known as Kyla Danella there we go so we're at 40 times objective lens at low power now you can actually see you can probably see what these guys look like and now at 4 times mag I reckon you can get your eye in on these but look what else do we have here if you remember in the previous slide this is in fact gyrodactylus, the skin fluke. Notice the large haptors and lack of the four eye spots. So this is I guess one of the exceptions to the rule. So before we've been looking at parasites that have that are larger than host cells. This time it's a little different, or very much different. Here if we have a look around you can see our mucus from the skin and also skin epithelium but no evidence of large parasites. What we're looking at really closely up here is at the border uh, between the skin mucus and the surrounding. You might just notice them um, previously, but you can see here these are smaller cells that are bordering the epithelium host cells. And free over here you can see that these are actually protozoal parasites. This is what's known as costia or ichthyobodo. Uh, much easier to diagnose on wet preparations. They appear like falling leaves or when they are attached in the sessile stage to the host cells they look like candles flickering in the, in the wind. And what you'll notice is uh, they're extending from the center of the round uh, oval shaped cells are uh, flagella. So this is ichthyobodo. And you can see them as we scan around. Uh, the edges, you can see a few more there. It's quite difficult to tell, I know, but they are there. Uh, if you're having difficulty uh, with the wet air dried uh, smears, you can always run a diff quick stain on them. And this has demonstrated the diagnostics in my DVD fish vetting techniques and practical tips instructional video. So, thank you for watching. And if you found that useful and interesting, I have more fish bedding techniques and practical tips available on the DVD. So here I'm choosing to show you some of the features or the scene selections available on this DVD which is available in PAL and NTSC. These are available through the website's shopping cart thefishvet.com.au Thank you for watching.